two, one. It is my great, great honor and pleasure to be here speaking with this incredible scholar, prolific award-winning uh, scholar and professor at the University of Nanterre, Paris, uh, in the Department of Letters, Mathieu Le Tourneau, who is going to take us on a journey through his own work and French popular culture. Welcome. Hello. It's a pleasure for me. Welcome, Mathieu. It's so amazing. Um, all of the work that you've been doing and um, kind of helping actually not only significantly putting on the map popular cultural studies from a francophone, a French perspective, which, you know, it's so interesting to me, and I'm hoping we can get into this, but at a certain point, you know, French theory was kind of everywhere, but it was a very specific kind of French theory. Um, and then at a certain moment, at least from my perspective, the U.S. started to take over, especially in terms of popular cultural studies. And I mention all this because the, the sense of French popular cultural studies for those of us outside of France um, isn't as obvious, if you will. But before we get into that, I wanted to ask you why and how? I mean, I know you are teaching your your position is in the Department of Modern Letters. I know that you've written on Dumas and Rambaud um, and other literary figures. How did you find your way to areas like youth fiction, children's literature, genres, uh, fiction, chain fictionality? Um, popular culture in general. Yeah, tell us about your journey, Mathieu. <laughs> yeah, that's particular because um, uh, I, have, um, I, I have followed um, studies in very classical um, universities. I, I, uh, I have been at the, the, the Ecole Normale Supérieure, which is very classical French university for uh, li literature. And um, I, uh, I prepared the aggregation, aggregation which is a, 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 another very classical uh, 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 university uh, 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 parcours. Uh, and um, um, uh, I don't know how I, I came to, to the popular culture. In fact, I think. Uh, my uh, my taste for uh, popular culture came from uh, childhood for like everybody and um um you know uh, when i was uh, young uh, during the 80s my parents uh, bought my father bought all the the comic magazines in france there is a lot a lot there, there was a lot a, a huge amount of uh, 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 comic uh, comic uh, newspapers um, uh, and um, during the 70s uh, the uh, comic newspaper became adult comic newspaper uh, there was before there was children comic newspaper and uh, with the 70s uh, uh, the, uh, a, a third important uh, comic newspaper such as uh, Metal Hurlant uh, which became uh, heavy metal in the United States. And uh, some other newspaper, uh, maybe you don't know, but uh, um, Fluid Glacial, L'Echo des Savannes, Pilot, uh, et cetera. And mm -hmm. um, my father bought all those uh, adult newspaper and he bought uh, some uh, children uh, comic newspapers, such as uh, 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 Le Journal de Spirou, Le Journal de Tintin, which were, were uh, comic newspaper for, for children. And um, um, they didn't vote, uh, they didn't buy some other uh, newspaper, uh, comic newspapers, such as uh, Mickey magazine, uh, which, were, which was uh, uh, devoted to American uh, character by Walt Disney. And they didn't buy uh, American comic books uh, because, uh, <laughs> They didn't like American uh, material because they thought Amer American material was uh, vulgar and they were distinctive uh, so, and they, they didn't want this. 
they didn't want some other French uh, uh, comic newspaper, but uh, they bought an uh, adult newspaper. And as a child, I have read a huge amount of adult newspaper. Uh, and uh, my friend, when they, they came home, uh, uh, discovered uh, this, uh, this uh, adult newspaper and, and they, 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 read this, they read it as a pornography because there was a, a, a naked woman, a, a slang, a violence, etc. And uh, for me, uh, it was a, a very complicated question to understand uh, what was uh, uh, readable, what was forbidden, what was um, um, uh, bad reading, good reading, so the question of, of, of taste is, uh, was very complicated because some porn stuff, uh, comic porn stuff uh, was uh, considered by my parents as a good material. And some, uh, some children, uh, uh, Mickey, Mickey uh, comic, comic strips, comic, comic, uh, comic stories uh, were consider considered as uh, bad readings. Mm. So, uh, the question of, uh, uh, of what, what we call in France distinction, uh, what we can read, what we cannot read, what is good, uh, uh, the hierarchy, hierarchy, hierarchies of, of taste is, uh, has always been uh, uh, something complicated for me. And I think uh, uh, that it, it was uh, one of the reasons I was interested in uh, my taste for uh, pop culture and uh, the fact that I, I want I, I, I really wanted to 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 study it at the university uh, when I when I began to to work on it it was complicated to to study it in France because um, uh, uh, the, the literature uh, departments uh, only uh, studied um, uh, uh, Proust, uh, Zola, Balzac, the, the great French writers, the, 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 what, what we call the canon. The, 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 I don't know how, how do, you, do you say canon? Mm -hmm. Canon. Yes, mm -hmm. canon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and uh, it, it was almost forbidden to, to study uh, uh, mm. popular comics, uh, popular mm. fiction. Uh, uh, but but during the, the, the 90s and the, the, the beginning of the 21, 21st century, uh, it was impossible to, 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 to limit uh, the, 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 the study of literature only to the canon. Mm -hmm. So I think the reason why I, I, I was so interested in, uh, in uh, pop culture, it, it's because we were in a, in a changing uh, um, a changing paradigm of culture in France and uh, the, the, the transformation of French system of culture uh, mm. was due to uh, the place pop culture uh, took in our uh, on our society in our relationship to culture French is a very was a, was a really distinctive society. Uh, that's, uh, maybe that's the, the, the one of the characteristics of French culture, the distinctive uh, relationship to culture. Mm. And uh, that, that distinction, that, that distinctive model of culture uh, uh, was, uh, be, began to be dis, to, to, to to be destroyed in the 90s and uh, in the beginning of the 21st century. And it was very interesting to, to, to see how culture was reinvented at, at this time. Is this really, an answer here? Yeah, yeah, really, really interesting. And I know we're going to return to this in a little bit um, because it seems like, <clears throat> at least with Roland Barthes and his mythologies in 1957 that there was a kind of at least in the universities um 
a kind of leapfrogging, almost like going from these really interesting semiotic in, analyses of you know menus and wrestling matches and cockfights and what have you, um, even in you know Levi Strauss and so on, to uh, decades later finally you know coming back to it um, from a different angle, but still um, very interesting that it you know if it, it feels like it could have gone deeper faster earlier than many other places like the UK with the Birmingham school or at the same time. Um, but it kind of, you know, it, it's almost like it had to wait several decades before we could get to it. Yeah. You know, um, the French theory, uh, who, who was so important in, uh, in the foundation of cultural studies, um, uh, uh, was uh, in fact cultural studies are really related to French theory, but uh, uh, in France th there has there has been a, a huge reaction against French theory and against cultural studies. Uh, the the, the, appear the appearance of uh, cultural studies in France um, can be maybe date to the beginning of the 21st century only. Mm. There is a huge delay between the United mm. States and France. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I really am fascinated by this history um, and haven't really, I haven't read anything really that charts that history in a nuanced and kind of detailed way. But before we talk more about that, I do want to talk about um, hmm. what it is. What is French pop cultural studies um, in your, from your perspective? Hmm. Yeah. One important point is that uh, the French pop culture is very important. Historically, it is very important. The 19th century uh, pop culture is uh, mainly French and uh, British. Uh, that, that, that's uh, the, the roman feuilleton in the 19th century, the press culture, the mm -hmm. uh, theatrical, popular theatrical culture, the first uh, cinema, uh, it, which is uh, before the first war, uh, war world uh, was mostly French. Uh, mainly French, uh, the French popular culture was really important. And uh, if you if you um, consider the, the 20, 20th century, uh, you see that uh, French popular culti culture continue to be very important, but only in France. <laughs> there is a, or maybe in uh, Italy, in Spain, uh, in uh, the Mediter Mediterranean world, but uh, uh, it, it keeps it keeps being important. Uh, we have a, a, a huge amount of uh, uh, popular writers, a huge amount of comic uh, uh, of comics in in France. Uh, the the French popular cinema is uh, still important. So the first point is that uh, uh, French pop culture is. Uh, 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 really important in uh, French culture, but uh, Fran French culture has uh, always uh, considered uh, its pop culture as uh, the other, the other for the high, high bro culture. Uh, maybe the, the battle of the bros uh, has been uh, 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 more important in France than in other, uh, other places. So, uh, the first point is uh, at the beginning, uh, the uh, French pop cultural studies has been um, uh, critical, uh, critical studies, critical theory uh, dominated by the model of the Frankfurt, Frankfurt School, etc. And uh, progressively, uh, some uh, some scholars, uh, most mainly some. Uh, um, uh, history uh, scholars or uh, literature scholars 
has begun to, to be interested in the uh, French popular uh, literature of the 19th century, uh, the Roman Feuilleton, etc. And progressively, uh, uh, th there has been a, um, an important field of research um, uh, around uh, uh, the 19th century French popular culture and uh, progressively uh, the 20th century. Uh, today, I, I, I would say that, um, that, that that question is a, an important field to redefine our, our own culture. Um, uh, there, is, there is a counter history of French culture, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, uh, an important uh, field of research, actually. Uh, today, um, um, mm -hmm. for an ex one example, uh, the nineteenth-century studies of literature uh, in France has been for a long time uh, dominated by the book and the great writers: Balzac, Zola, Flaubert, etc. Uh, the the the, the twenty last years. Uh, uh, a group of researchers in uh, literature and history um, has uh, demonstrated that uh, the, the, the real, real heart of French 19th century literature was not the book, but it was uh, the newspaper and the, the press. And uh, this uh, demonstration transformed totally uh, the, the image of 19th century French culture, uh, because uh, the writers uh, uh, were in re uh, uh, were journalists. Balzac was a journalist. Zola was a journalist, and uh, we discovered that what we described at, at a, as a book culture was in fact uh, a journalist culture. A newspaper culture, and it transformed totally the image of uh, 19th century uh, French literature. And I think today, uh, one of the works of the French pop cultural studies is to uh, uh, redescribe the whole field of uh, French culture and transform hier hierarchies and uh, demonstrate uh, uh, the importance of uh, 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 paperback culture, of uh, comic books culture, and of comic uh, newspaper, etc. Yeah, it, really, uh, really fast. Yeah, Mathieu, really, yeah, absolutely brilliant. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the the. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, when even today outside of France, you know very often there's still that residue of French pop, French culture being the highbrow culture, but very, um, not slowly, but very progressively, people are realizing that actually it is French popular culture mm -hmm. that's the more, or that's as interesting a generator of new ways of experiencing the world. Um, so yeah, even we're feeling it on this side of the Atlantic, say. Um, mm. Let me ask you about, for instance, maybe we can mm. continue the, this thread of, of uh, thinking here with your, your book um, uh, here on uh, Fantomas. Is that correct, Fantomas? Yes. Um, and what did you discover here in terms of, you know, exactly what you're talking about? Yeah, Fantomas is a, um, a super criminal uh, of uh, the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, it's the hero or the anti-hero of uh, thir uh, 32 uh, novels. Uh, 
the, the, the novels were written by uh, Pierre Souvestre and Marcel Alain, two, two, two writers who, who wrote one novel uh, per month. So 32 novels in 32 months. And uh, they, they told the story of uh, this uh, super criminal, uh, this genius of evil, it's his own uh, name, and uh, it's it's Fantomas. Uh, 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 I think there there are many interesting things uh, around this character. The first thing it's the fact that it's uh, a, an industrial series, uh, written not written, uh, dictated on a, uh, on a, um, I don't know how, how you say seer. Uh, I don't know the, uh, how do you say sear cylinders. Mm. I don't know. You, you say sear uh, cylinders to mm -hmm. to um, like a. It, I know what you're talking about. The ancestor it, of, uh, of the of tape. the tape recorder. Yeah. 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 So they they dictated it on uh, those cylinders, and uh, they, they wrote. Uh, one chapter, uh, each of them wrote uh, half of the chapters to, to, to go faster. And uh, uh, they, they invented a, a kind of uh, a modern literature. And they fascinated uh, all the, the, the avant-garde, French avant-garde, such as uh, 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 the surrealists, uh, such as um, uh, Max Jacob, uh, uh, André Breton, etc. Uh, and they, they, they fascinated all the, the, the writers, poets, etc. because of this modernity. But it was an industrial modernity. The, the first point is this idea of uh, uh, something which is uh, really modern, but industrial. Mm. That's uh, the first point. The second point is the fact that the fascination of Fantomas is related at the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, it's related to uh, the fact it was transmedia creation because uh, the, the character was created in 1911 uh, and the first uh, cinema adaptations were uh, uh, done in uh, 1913, two, two years later. And it was another series of movies because uh, uh, Louis Feuillade made five movies. So the second point is uh, that uh, Fantomas was uh, uh, a transmedia uh, uh, creation at the beginning of the uh, 20th century. And uh, so what we discovered around Fantomas is uh, the fact that it's, it's badly written, it's stupid, it's pure trash fiction. But in this trash fiction, uh, a lot of uh, uh, essential uh, inventions of uh, the modernity uh, were, uh, uh, were present. And uh, so it, it's a very important character, but it, it's badly written. And uh, one of the points uh, very important for me is, is to understand that in some, uh, in some poor creation, in, in some badly written stuff, in some junk uh, literature or cinema, etc., uh, we can find very important uh, uh, aesthetic or uh, po poetics uh, uh, events. Mm. And, uh, uh, for me, one of the important points of uh, Fantomas is that he, he, he condensate all of this. Um, and there is another thing very interesting in Fantomas. Uh, he, he's a ghost, a phantom. Phantom is mm. a ghost. And uh, he's a phantom because he, he has no face. He, in the first books, you never know who is Fantomas. Which, what character is Fantomas? There mm. is a, a, an old lady, a, a young banker, a, a singer, and maybe one of them is Fantomas. Or maybe many of them are Fantomas, and you never know who is Fantomas. And in the in the the, the movie, uh, he's uh, the, the actor René, René Navarre is always uh, disguised. So this character who proliferates has no face. 
is unknown. And he is a threat because he is everywhere and he is unknown. But he is everywhere in the stories and in the society, on the wall of the city, uh, with posters, uh, on mo in movie theaters, uh, uh, in uh, uh, popular uh, um, um, news, new, new stands, etc. And this, uh, this uh, invasion of the public space uh, is uh, uh, an expression of uh, the, 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 the rise of the media culture. Mm, really fascinating, amazing, um, <laughs> absolutely incredible. Um, and that this was happening so early in the 20th yeah. century, incredible. Um, you also work, Mathieu, um, on youth or YA fiction, um, the adventure novel. Um, and in 2010, you did publish a book, a significant book on this that looks at genre, genre evolution, also the coloniality of power, say. Um, <clears throat> tell us a little bit about this work. Well, it, um, it was important for me to, to, to work on, it's, it's one of my first, uh, first works on, uh, during my, uh, my, my uh, scholar uh, practice. It was my uh, uh, PhD. The, the, the book is from my PhD. Um, it was important for me to 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 begin to work on a, a huge amount of books. So I took this genre because uh, it was uh, the the main genre of uh, popular literature, boys' literature during uh, uh, seventy years in France, and uh, in France. Uh, the scholars who worked on uh, adventure literature uh, worked only on uh, uh, important writers, Jules Verne, uh, uh, Stevenson, Joseph Conrad, uh, Joseph Kessel in France, the, the important writers. And what was important for me was to work on uh, very popular writers, uh, very poor books, very cheap uh, productions. Uh, an example, I, I, will, I will show you an example. You see those, those, kinds, those kind of very popular booklets that nobody mm. worked on it. No, mm. no, no French scholar works, worked on uh, this kind of very popular books. Mm -hmm. And those books were, were published by uh, hundreds of thousands mm. uh, of... Uh, they, they were published. This was uh, uh, published I think this kind of popular collection, uh, published popular series, were uh, uh, issued at uh, maybe forty thousand um, uh, exemplars uh, each two weeks. One new wow. book. So wow. uh, that was really important. You have thousands, maybe uh, each each year. Thousand, thousand of titles issued mm -hmm. and nobody worked on it and when you work when you work on, on on those huge amount of books you discover that uh, the culture the the the, the, the so social imaginary is produced by those books or those books uh, are vehicles Mm -hmm. uh, uh, carry the social imaginary of a collectivity. Uh, one mm -hmm. example for the uh, adventure literature is uh, the colonial imagination, uh, but maybe, but to the 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 fact that uh, the 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 French society was unsatisfactory, and the desire for uh, exoticism was a, a desire for savagery uh, for mm. violence for transgression mm. so i, I um, mm. the fact that i took uh, 600 or 700 books uh, to uh, adventure novel novels uh, let me understand this cultural dimension of genres mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. But yeah. that was a PhD, so it was uh, the first work uh, of a student. <laughs> <laughs> Fascinating and very, very important. And it's funny, um, you know, now we're seeing a lot more work in that area, especially around Tintin and Baba and all that, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, yeah, really <clears throat> groundbreaking work that you were doing there, very important. Um, in a book that, in a, a, another work of yours, um, you talk about the chains of fictionality, but you construct or you formulate the concept of the, the poétique de la serialité. Can you talk about that for us? Yeah. When, when we talk about uh, serial fiction, uh, we, we think, we, we talk about uh, uh, TV series, uh, 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 comic series, with, with uh, reoccurring characters, etc. Uh, we, we can think about the transmedia series, such as uh, Star Wars, etc. All our diegetic series uh, around uh, the same world, transfictional series. Uh, my idea was that um, the seriality was not only a question of uh, the, the of uh, history of worlds, but a question of industrial uh, logics. Uh, the seriality was uh, an, an, uh, an industrial culture before uh, um, a narrative or diegetic uh, culture. So uh, I, I tried to, to show that the poetics of seriality are not only poetics, uh, text, textual poetics, but uh, industrial med media poetics, uh, uh, technical poetics, and uh, that we, we have to, to understand the pleasure of serial fiction as a, a, a pleasure of uh, cons consumer culture, of uh, um, 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 series of objects to understand that we like the series of objects uh, as much as we like uh, the reoccurring characters, etc. Uh, the, mm. the idea that uh, the pleasure of seriality is a pleasure of objects in a culture, uh, in a material culture of series series of books, mm. series of uh, uh, a newspaper, series of issues of a newspaper, series of pulps in a newsstand, different uh, sort of pulps offered in a newsstand, a series of uh, uh, books of the same genre in a, in a bookshelves of a, li of a library or a, a bookshop, etc. This, mm. this serial logic is not so much different uh, of the serial uh, uh, experience we have when we when we go to a uh, in a mall and when we see the the all the, the packets of uh, cereals uh, of uh, coffee of etc it's it's a, a real culture material culture and uh, the pleasure of the, the the novels of the fictions of the genre stories of the uh, um, uh, reoccurring characters such as Batman, Superman, etc., uh, is uh, is related to to this uh, to this uh, global serial culture. Serial culture. Mm, really interesting. Can I ask uh, in this poetic um, formulation? Is there <clears throat> in your work um, also a pleasure in the ruptures of yes. say seriality and expectation of seriality yeah in fact uh, it, at all the le levels of seriality uh, the um, uh, the the, the most the, the, the thing which is the more important thing is the surprise Mm -hmm. The originality, the culture, mm -hmm. the, the, the culture of seriality is a culture of originality. Because when you look at a series of things which is uh, 
uh, related, uh, you you only look for the differences. Mm -hmm. And and but but that's true with uh, an adventure of uh, Batman or an adventure of uh, Crazy Cat, for example, which is very a serial character, but something really original, Crazy Cat, mm. uh, the Crazy Cat comic strip. Um, and when you look at those kind of uh, of uh, uh, stories, uh, you are uh, uh, interested uh, uh, to the, uh, by only by the fact that uh, with. Uh, 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 some rules uh, you know the rules of the the series and what interests you is the 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 re renewing of, of this of this uh, mm -hmm. of the series with the same rules but uh, when mm -hmm. you read a, a newspaper you know the the the, the 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 ideas of the newspaper the the aesthetics of the newspaper etc but each time you buy, buy it you want something new you want some uh, new experience, some new, uh, 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 some new chronicles, uh, some originals, uh, original ideas, etc. Uh, when you read a, a book, uh, a stereotype book in a in a series of uh, of paperbacks or pulps, uh, you expect something new each time. So the question of originality is the main point in the culture of seriality. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, it's it, it's something which is true to uh, the, the the consumer culture. You, mm -hmm. you expect something new each time yeah. you, you consume. You expect something new. Yeah, it gets me thinking, Mathieu, about uh, you know. There's a lot of talk about the what what people say is a superhero fatigue with all the superhero movies, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and everything. And actually, more probably more accurately, um, using your your research and your formulation, it's it's that the movies are not serving up that nugget, that little crystal of originality anymore. They're they're a repetition without <laughs> without that you know, that spark of originality, right? And maybe that's why we're so tired of the superhero movies, right? Maybe, but you know, um, uh, first thing, uh, we, were, we weren't tired uh, five, day, five years ago. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, maybe, uh, maybe uh, next movie will be a, a renewal of the, of the formula. Mm -hmm. we, can, mm -hmm. we can help. Or, and maybe... Uh, the, the renewal will be somewhere else in uh, mm. in video games or in mm -hmm. a TV series or mm -hmm. uh, not uh, not in Marvel but in uh, in uh, DC uh, mm -hmm. and maybe uh, the the superhero uh, uh, genre will decline for a moment and something new uh, will take the place of the super the superhero uh, uh, genres uh, the genre the, the genres. Are, decline and new mm -hmm. genres appear so mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. i think it's a, the, the the cycle of uh, of uh, serial culture mm, beautiful the, re yeah. the renewal of uh, serial culture uh, is a uh, is related to to the decline of some uh, forms mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah beautiful yeah um just to kind of i mean this is all related of course but you also work on and have published on uh, laughter. And it, it, it's interesting, you know, um, I also wrote a co-authored a book with um, my friend and, and colleague. Um, and um, we, you know, it was on laughter and why it matters. But it is still, it's still something that I think is very understudied, but tell me how laughter for you works its way in and through your very important studies on transmedia or popular culture. Uh, I, I worked on uh, the love culture uh, with Alain Vaillant, which is a colleague of uh, Nanterre. Uh, the, the idea is uh, that uh, we, we, we don't, uh, the, 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 the scholars uh, don't study laughter 
uh, as much as they should study it. Uh, we uh, study uh, important works of art, we study important books, but uh, Luther is, is not serious uh, production. So the idea uh, and our idea was that Luther, uh, the, 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 the production around Laufer, the comic uh, production, is one of the more important uh, part of the 19th, uh, uh, of, the, of the modern culture, of the contemporary culture. And our, our idea was that first, uh, the uh, comic production is a huge amount, a huge part of uh, cultural and industrial uh, uh, production. Two, if it's so important, it's because uh, it plays a major uh, part in the, 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 the stability of the society. An important part in the uh, uh, the, the me media character of our culture. Alors, why is it so important for the for the the modern culture? Because Luther is an aggressive uh, uh, action, but it's aggressive and it it um, it. Um, I don't know the English word. It, Ça, ça l'agressivité. It, it's aggressivity, but without aggressivity. It, it subtracts aggressivity to the aggressivity. I don't know the English word, sorry, but mm -hmm. I, I hope you, you understand. Mm -hmm. So you are you, you say something aggressive to someone, mm -hmm. but in a way which is not aggressive. And in modern society with rules, with laws, uh, mm. with uh, 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 in uh, in social interaction, uh, which are violent. It's a way to uh, be, uh, be violent without being violent. So that's the first point. Second mm. point, uh, in a med media society, a uh, society uh, where information relationship are related to uh, mass media, uh, to uh, radio, TV, newspapers, etc. Uh, the relationship to the real and the relation to the reality and the real relationship to other people are always mediated, okay? Always mm -hmm. mediated by the, the mass media. And uh, uh, the, the Luther is a way to create an illusion of immediate relationship mm. when you listen to radio and you 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 listen to to something funny it creates a, a relationship immediate re, an illusion of immediate relationship so it's something important to create a cohesive media uh, culture a cohesive media society i i, I hope I, i've been uh, clear mm. enough but i'm not sure <laughs> yeah no absolutely um so, so in this book, we, we described all the parts of uh, this uh, Luther culture uh, in the media, in, uh, in uh, re uh, direct relationship, in, in theater, in press, in uh, uh, books, uh, comics, etc. Really important. It's also interesting that um, humor and laughter are very cult culturally specific. It's hard oh, yes. to to carry right as we know as and fa in fact film directors know this very well um yes. you know it's hard to carry um something that is you know creating like you said yes. this illusion of proximity and relationship with an audience from one culture to another yes absolutely um let me so as we start to to kind of wind into some of your very recent work, um, and I mean, really, this is an extension of everything you've been doing so far, but this is one of your most current publications, mm -hmm. just came out, what, a year ago. Um, it, 
were you were there things that first of all tell us about aux origines de la pop culture um and if there were any new surprises that have ha asked you to kind of reformulate some of your other understanding of how popular culture works and genre and transmedia and um you talked about fantomas um well what's going on here after the second world war up through the 90s well in europe when we talk about uh uh second part of the 20th century and when we, we talk about uh, pop culture uh, the the the, gen the general idea is that uh, pop culture is dominated by the United States. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, after the Second World War, uh, the arrival of uh, noir genre, American noir genre, uh, the arrival of uh, science fiction, of Western fiction, uh, transformed totally the tradition of uh, European popular culture, which was dominated by France and uh, Great Britain. And our idea was to uh, see if it was true and if, if, if it resisted to uh, 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 a precise study. So we, we, we worked on um, two very important French uh, publishers, the Fleuve Noir and the Press de la Cité. Uh, and they were popular publishers. And um, we, our idea was uh, that uh, those publishers were uh, 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 um, at the origin of a transmedia European culture, uh, which was related to American culture with noir genre, science fiction, but which was totally transformed by European tradition. And the idea is uh, that uh, what, we interpret, what, what we interpret as uh, an American popular culture is in fact the re reinvention of European popular culture after the huge crisis of the Second World War. Uh, uh, French, uh, French, pub the French public took the American genres and used the American genres to to recreate a French culture. And from th this French culture, they uh, they uh, they. Um, diffused this French culture in Europe and produced and, and contributed because there were, there were other uh, Italian uh, creators, uh, uh, English, uh, British creator, German creators who, who did the same, but they invented a European post-war culture. Uh, one example uh, very interesting is uh, spy fiction. Mm. The spy fiction is the main genre of the 60s in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, in uh, novels, in cinema, it's the main genre. Mm -hmm. And what is interesting it, uh, in uh, spy fiction is, first, it's a fiction of the end of colonial empires. Mm. So it's a way to describe the, the world after the crisis of the colonial world of the interwar. First point. Second point, the spy fiction is uh, uh, describe a world dominated by United States and USSR. So Europe is a sec uh, secondary, is, is, uh, uh, is not the center of the world in uh, spy fiction, but uh, if you read European crime fiction, if you if you see uh, 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 Italo-French uh, Euro spy uh, uh, spy uh, movies, mm -hmm. you discover uh, 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 
uh, spy characters such as uh, OSS 117, SAS, uh, uh, FX 18. Uh, you don't know them, but <laughs> that's the, 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 the European characters. And you, you discover characters who circulate in all Europe, uh, in France, in Germany, in uh, England, and uh, who can collaborate uh, together, the French with uh, the Italian, the French with the English, the English with the German. And this collaboration is something totally new at this time. Totally new because in the interwar, the German was the enemy, the British was the enemy, uh, German described French as uh, traitors, etc. And after the war, with the, 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 the re reconfiguration of the, the world, with the imagination of the American fiction, there was a way in spy fiction to invent a, 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 a European popular culture, uh, a European culture in those stupid movies, in those stupid books, and something was invented of the, the new modern European culture. It's an example of those uh, transformation we tried to describe in this book. Mm. And we, we, we tried to do the same with uh, the French science fiction, with the uh, uh, European noir, uh, mm. with a uh, very uh, uh, French or Italian characters in, uh, uh, but uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, uh, in a world uh, so close mm. to the American uh, character, to a noir mm. uh, fiction, etc. That's fascinating. Uh, it got me thinking, Mathieu, about rethinking Jean-Luc Godard's Alphaville and yes. not, and thinking about not thinking about it as a direct um, a direct reformation of U.S. crime genre, but actually having deeper roots in this transmedia. Uh, cultivation and growing of transmedia in France and in Europe that you just described. Yeah, for, uh, an example for Alphaville by Jean-Luc Godard, the main actor is Eddie Constantine. Eddie Constantine is a Franco-American actor. He was uh, uh, very famous for playing uh, uh, a character by Peter Chenet, uh, named, uh, so, uh, I don't remember the name. Um, um, oh, I don't remember the name, but a, a, a detective by Peter Chenet. And Peter Chenet was the more, more important writer of noir fiction during the 50s. It, he was the paragon of American fiction, but he was an English writer. So it was. So the paragon of American noir fiction in all Europe was a, a mock American detective uh, by a British fake American writer played by a Franco-American actor. And Jean-Luc Godard knows all of this. He knows all of this when he, 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 do, uh, he does uh, uh, Alphaville. So it's related to this American culture, of course. It's a direct, uh, direct uh, uh, quotation of the American culture, a polemic quotation, but it's a quotation. Mm. Wow, yeah. <laughs> now I have to go back and, and watch it again carefully. Um, Mathieu, tell me what kinds of classes you teach there at... Uh, Universi Université Nanterre um, and how you're able to, I don't know, um, what, what are some of your trademark ways of guiding your students through the kind of exploration that you yourself love to do? I hope it's not to be boring, <laughs> my, my trademark, but uh, uh, no, um, I, I, uh, I teach on uh, serial fiction, uh, transmedia fiction, uh, media culture, but no, Serial fiction, transmedia fiction. Uh, one of the questions I, I, I developed in my uh, last uh, teachings, it, it's, it's a question of, uh, of, uh, of, of 
banal lecture, banal reading, sorry, banal reading. The fact that uh, when we study uh, uh, books, we study them from a point of view of uh, uh, scholar reading. And uh, one of the questions uh, I, 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 I try to, to, to develop in my teachings is, is uh, how can we, uh, how can uh, with the, the, the tools of uh, literary uh, scholarship, uh, literary studies, are, are we able to understand the, the prosaic reading of someone reading on uh, the beach, reading in mm. a train, uh, reading uh, something uh, uh, he think uh, stupid, but he likes it, uh, watching uh, a stupid, how, how can, how can we use tools to understand those readings? How can we, how can we uh, uh, take seriously the mm -hmm. not serious reading? That's one of the points uh, which interested me with uh, the students. So I asked them to, to, uh, to, uh, to describe a book, but in a, uh, in, in a special situation, in a, a special use of the book. Uh, for mm -hmm. example, uh, how can you uh, explain a book, but if you read it on the beach? How can, how can you uh, describe this book, the, the text, but if you read it on the beach? Or if you, uh, if you uh, uh, read it being a child uh, who, uh, who has stole, uh, stole it in the... Uh, parents' bookshelves and uh, so all those questions. How, how, how can we describe the pleasures of fiction in the, all those special uh, relationship to fiction? Uh, and it's an important question for the pop culture because pop culture is always uh, um, a particular experience of something standardized. So uh, that's one of the points which interest me uh, at the moment with my, my student. And I hope uh, it interests my students. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, well, one, maybe one day we can be teaching together or certainly um, having some fun in the classroom. I, hopefully I hope look so. forward. Um, yeah. So what these days, uh, you know, I, I binge a lot of, you know, serial, serial TV, Netflix, especially because it's, you know, bringing into the, you know, through its platform, a lot of French serial television that I think is really excellent. Um, when I watched Lupin, I was thinking about, you know, your work on Fantomas, but also there's, you know, vampires and so much going on. But what, what's grabbing your attention these days in French popular culture? I think uh, the, the characteristics of the French popular culture is uh, uh, is related to the globalization of the the um, the, the, the pop culture and uh, the fact that uh, platforms such as uh, Net Netflix um, uh, tend to to research uh, tend to to program uh, some uh, uh, some. Uh, uh, specific national programs defined by a globalized culture. Mm. And uh, French products uh, are totally uh, uh, characterized by this uh, uh, yeah. national local, glo localized culture. I don't know if you say localized in a, yes, I think you, you and mm -hmm. this localized culture is one of the, First points uh, which interest me in uh, French contemporary uh, uh, popular culture. The second one is what I call uh, the, the post Fordist culture. Uh, pop culture was a Fordist culture. Uh, the, 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 the 20th uh, pop culture, when, when pop culture, modern pop culture wa was in, invented, it was related to the rise of uh, the Fordist uh, industry and the Fordist culture. And now that we, we are in the post-Fordist culture, 
the Fordist model has transformed in, in this post-Fordist culture, which is a singularized, standardized culture. And uh, the way uh, the contemporary French culture tried to be uh, distinctive, but popular, uh, specific, uh, but uh, standardized, uh, uh, can seduce a globalized uh, public, but in reaffirming the specificity of the French culture is one of the points which interest me. The, 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 the series Le, Lupin, Le Pin, uh, mm -hmm. that you show on the, on the screen now, is an example of this. Arsène Lupin is a Belle Époque French character, a character of the beginning of the 20th century, uh, created by uh, uh, Maurice Leblanc. Uh, so the, um, the creators of the series took a French literary character, but a French popular literary character. So they, they, they decided to inscribe the series in one of what they think is the French characteristics of the, the, the characteristics of the French culture, the distinctive classic culture, but a popular classic culture. They took a, a Paris setting to be to, to, to offer a touristing touristic setting for uh, the international public. And they took a contemporary uh, setting and a black character to modernize uh, the uh, story and to offer something which is uh, convergent with the globalized culture. So we see that uh, this, uh, this, this story is, is the affirmation of a specificity of the French culture, but for a globalized culture. So that's what one point I can of, uh, propose. The, 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 the other point is the fact that French culture has the desire to be an important culture. I, I think it's the heritage of the imperial, uh, the imperial mentality of the French people. So uh, there is still this desire to be a major cult cultural actor in the worldwide in the world. And uh, uh, today, the French think that to be a cultural major actor, a major cultural actor, you need to accept to play uh, the rules of uh, the uh, pop culture, the genre culture, uh, the, uh, the, um, the, the globalized pop culture. And uh, the, the French contemporary pop culture is a tentative to offer some kind of a cheap luxury pop culture, cheap hybro pop culture, something very uh, ambiguous, something a kind of uh, cheap because there is no, uh, no money to, to produce something uh, um, um, ambitious, but with uh, uh, characteristic of the image of the storytelling who look uh, to the hybro conventions of, of culture and of fiction. So there is this, this mix of hybro and lowbro, of genre and singularity, of French, um, French references and globalized culture, which, is, uh, which are the characteristics of uh, French con popular French contemporary culture. Mm. Fascinating. Um... Oh my, yeah, absolutely fascinating. In fact, I was just looking at this poster for uh, mm. the Lupin and you have, you know, the Eiffel Tower, of course, in the background. And then you have the figure himself, as you mentioned now, mo you know, modernized. It's a quota mm. You know, it's a quotation of, uh, of uh, Fantomas because yeah. the first uh, poster, uh, uh, the first cover of Fantomas represented Fantomas uh, floating uh, on uh, uh, the, the the Paris with the, mm. the Eiffel Tower, so it's it's a quotation. Mm. 
You, oh, all, you, always, amazing. you, you always have the, 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 the Eiffel Tower on the French productions. Yeah. <laughs> and I was also noticing the Nike shoes. And yeah. so it's the glocal, absolutely the glocal <laughs> already captured in the in the poster itself. Um, and, you, you know, there's so much going on. And I'm, you know, Luc Besson is a kind of French industry in and of himself, but even beyond that, there's so much now because of platform, um, mm -hmm. TV, uh, uh, you know, et cetera, um, that we're seeing here in the U.S. coming out of France. But where do you see us going with French popular cultural studies, transmedia studies, um, it seems like a, a great time to be someone like you in France right now. Yes, yeah, uh, I can see a, a, a very positive dynamics of uh, the, the transmedia and pop culture studies today in France. Uh, we will have uh, in, in, um, in October, next October, uh, uh, a huge um, um, congress around uh, uh, pop culture studies, uh, media studies, uh, transmedia studies, and we see uh, a very positive dynamics uh, in research. Uh, we see uh, we see uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, prof pro pro um, tenure professors uh, recruited uh, at the university, etc. So that's the positive point. <laughs> Uh, the, 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 um, my opinion is that there are important questions. One of the one of the points would will be to reconciliate uh, uh, critical theory and uh, uh, fan studies, uh, cultural studies uh, theories, and that's uh, a difficult point in France. I don't know if uh, you have a, uh, um, if the problem is still a problem in in United States, but in France it's something complicated. Reconciliate the old critical theory and uh, the the um, the fan studies, media studies, uh, transmedia studies. Um, and to me, for me, it's it's one of the important points. The second point is to to be able to historicize mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the, the media situation. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's an important point to understand that what, we, uh, what, what fascinates us today is the result of a long story, mm -hmm. a long story, a long history that we, we have not completely understood today. We, this long story uh, has to be uh, understood uh, uh, because uh, we cannot understand the, the transformation of uh, uh, the, the, the transmedia practices if uh, we don't understand the, uh, the, their history uh, on. Uh, um, it's history uh, uh, since uh, the 19th century. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe another point is to 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 be able to to define uh, transmedia studies. Uh, in a real uh, globalized perspective. Uh, mm -hmm. Today, the transmedia studies are, are dominated by uh, a USA point of view, and uh, um, it, it's, it would be important to, to, to produce uh, a global history of transmedia. Mm -hmm. You know the, the global history that, uh, to today the 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 the, the new um, the, 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 the researches of global histories history uh, histories uh, from the uh, different sides sides. Uh, I, I think for the, the the media studies, for the pop culture studies, and for the transmedia studies, it would be important to offer uh, some kind of. Uh, 
uh, global history of uh, of all the, the stuff. Yeah, I don't know if I answered to your question, but uh, no, that's... yeah, absolutely, um, and <clears throat> speaks to the specificity of your work within French popular cultural studies and its history of cultural making mm -hmm. and consumption, but also eventually um, both within historical periods and kind of over long stretches of time, how that reaches beyond the national mm -hmm. borders. Mm -hmm. And of course, with the acceleration of you know the transfer transfer of information and story across uh, national borders today of course it has to become something that we do um, both in the specificity of the national production but also with an yes. eye to how it's circulating on a global model today absolutely yeah beautiful um oh my goodness what can i say um mathieu letourneau this has been quite a journey um amazing you have unzipped your you know incredible brain um, sharing all this incredible information about why french pop cultural studies matters I'm, merci beaucoup i'm really sorry for my poor english i hope it was understandable because uh, that's I'm not uh, the, the best uh, English. Uh, <laughs> no, it was English absolutely oh, brilliant. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, no. Brilliant. Absolutely not. I'm sure it wasn't. <laughs> no, no. Um, see, merci beaucoup. Um, and I'm going merci to go ahead. Merci à vous.